Got another little wet fly for you this week. This is the lead wing coachman. Decided to go ahead and tie this this week because last week I did a fly called the black turkey, which is very similar to this. The focus of that fly was to demonstrate how to use turkey wing, turkey tail rather, as the wing for the fly where it's just folded. It's not two, two different separate slips that are put together for the wing. And it got me thinking that it is the, the black turkey is similar to the lead wing coach. And so I just decided to go ahead and do that so that you can compare apples to oranges and see uh, what the similarities and the differences are. Lead wing coachman has been around for many, many years. It is a fantastic fly and it is a very fun fly to tie. So this is the lead wing coachman and I'll go ahead and get started. start the lead wing coachman by placing my hook in the vise. This is a fulling mill FM15 in a size 12. Go ahead and debar the hook. And then I'll attach my thread. For thread I'm just using a Uni 80 in black. Attach my thread just about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and just run it down about an eye length along the hook here and then we can get rid of the waste. At this point I'm going to tie in my rib, not my rib, my uh, tag. Tag on this is a uh, gold tinsel. I'm using a Danville size 14 silver and gold tinsel. tie this in with the silver side up and then I'm going to draw this back to where I just have a little bit of the tip of that just the length of the body and then I can continue wrapping down the hook shank to the point of the hook. Once I'm at the point of the hook I'll flip the hook over and I'll put in my tag. This will flip over the gold side I'm going to put four wraps of tinsel down the hook shank. These are touching turns or slightly over wrapping. Just go down the bend a little bit, four wraps down, four wraps back up. I'll secure that in with three wraps of thread. And then I can trim away the excess tinsel. and then secure the rest of that in. My thread positioned at the point of the hook still. Now I'm gonna tie in the rib. The rib on this is just a, a fine gold wire. This is a Danville wire in gold. This is a size 12 hook. If you wanted to, you could go with a medium wire if you wanted something a little bit heavier. If you're going smaller, say a size 14 or 16 on this fly, I definitely would stick with the fine it's not there for flash or anything or weight. It's there to help protect the peacock curl. So I'm going to wrap that in three or four times. Notice that I am wrapping down the hook shank just a little bit because I'm tying materials in and getting my thread down to its final position at the end of the body. The body on this, I'm using a strong peacock curl. You want to select four fairly long fibers and you're going to match up the butt ends of those. Butt ends are the ones with the little curlies on them where they came off of the rachis of the, the long feather. I'm going to match those up and I'm going to trim the whites off. And then I'm going to tie this in such that, let me get that wire out of the way. I tie this in such that the ends of that are the go the length of the body. I'm going to put in three or four wraps working down the hook shank 
my resulting position for my thread should be right between the point of the hook and the barb. This is right where the body will end and then the tag begins and therefore when I start to wrap this in for the body it'll start right there. I'll now wrap forward just collecting those materials, the hurl and the wire along the body and stop about an eye length from the eye of the hook. I don't have to worry very much about a super smooth body here, so I'm not putting in touching turns. I just want it collected down. If there's a little bump or something in there, the peacock hurl will cover it up. I'm gonna take that peacock hurl and I want to stroke that out a little bit on that first turn so that all my fibers are under the same tension. And then I'm just going to wrap this forward. I'm going to wrap this forward to make the body of the lead wing coachman. Got something wrong there. Something didn't go in nice and tight or something. I don't know. I got a bump in it. So I'm just going to back this off again. Somewhere where I can start all over again. There we go. We kind of spread out a little bit there. There. Now I got all of them together. That's better. Once I get up to where my thread is at, I can tie that in with three or four wraps and trim away the excess. Don't try to get another wrap in. You don't want to crowd the eye on this as is. We're going to actually wrap down on just the very ends of these peacock curls to put in our collar and wing. I'll tidy that up a little bit. And then I'm ready to apply my rib. The rib is going to actually be counter wrapped so that it will cross over the peacock hurl and help protect it. Get about five wraps in. Secure that in with a few wraps of thread and then you can twist wire off. I'm going to tidy up this area again for my wing and hackle. Now the hackle goes on first for this and the hackle is a brown speckled hen. I'll choose a hackle where the barbs are going to be the length that I want, which is generally about the, the length of the shank is what I like. Some people like them a little bit shorter. They like them to just touch the, the point of the hook. Others like them a little longer. I'm in the little longer camp. And I'm only putting in a couple of wraps here, so it isn't like I'm putting a huge amount of hackle on this. So I'm just going to grab the tip with my fingers here. I don't need the hackle pliers because all I want is just about this much just for a very very sparse collar. Not very sparse but a sparser collar. I can trim away the rest of the tip of that feather just to leave me a little anchor. Tie that in right at the end of the peacock hurl. Take my hackle pliers. Sweeping these back, I'll then polymer those in. There's one. That's it. That's about it. Two wraps is all I get. my thread over and actually going to 
get a couple of turns on that rachis, to a couple, three turns. And that's just to secure it down real well so when I pop it off, it doesn't break. If it breaks underneath the thread, then the whole hackle will come undone. And I can just pop that off. Now, some people would prefer not to palmer the hackle around. They prefer a throat, just kind of more of a traditional wet ply thing. So if you wanted to, you could just tie in a throat. Um, I kind of like to stroke the fibers down a little bit and just give the appearance more of a throat, but it's up to you. For the wing on this, the lead wing coachman uses some gray mallard flight feathers. So these are kind of a dark gray on this side here, but the other side, they're a little bit lighter gray, which is fine because what we're going to do is, as you can see, the feather has a little bit of a bend or cup to it right here. We're going to actually place those together so that the curve cancels out and we end up with a flat wing. We don't want a wing that is flared out. So I'll cut my slips out and I'll put those together such that the two curved pieces are together and they flatten it out. This is probably the trickiest part of this fly and any wet fly that uses a matched wing. People have a hard time handling these and getting them just right. Just take your time with it. This is a, it's a pretty simple fly and the wings right here are probably the most complicated for a lot of people starting out with wet flies. Um, you know, this is one where you can get the feathers fairly easy and just practice with it. Now you want the slip usually to be about the gap of the hook. Mine's one side is okay, but the other's a little bit wide, as you can see. So I just take my bodkin in, into the side of that, and then peel out those two or three that are extras. So now I have both sides the same width. Like that. I'm going to place these right up on top. I want the tips to extend maybe half a, half a shank length behind the bend here. You don't have a tail on this, so therefore uh, normally you'd go about halfway down the tail. That's going to put you just, you know, a little bit past the bend of the hook here. I'm going to pinch the fly and the wings in both my thumb and index finger here, and then I'm going to use a pinch wrap to tie this in. I'll pinch it when I come up, roll my fingers forward, and then when I come down the other side, I'll slide it in under my index finger and then pull towards me. As you can see, that pulls the whole wing down to the hook, put in another pinch wrap, and then I can put two or three wraps in, not super tight, just so that it's anchored and I can see if the wing is positioned right. I don't mind some of it coming over the side here. This is all pushed down right up on top, but either one looks good. It is nice and straight back this way. The sweep on both of these slips are, aren't quite the same and even, but that's okay. So if you're happy with it, you can just go ahead and tie it in. I'm going to try this one more time because I want to see if I can get this side here facing you right up on top of the hook shank a little bit more. So just take your time with it. Get your fingers in position to do a pinch wrap like this. Bring that down. Another pinch wrap. Secure it in a couple wraps just to anchor it in. Yep, and at this time I have this side is just right down on top, and so is this side. With that done, I'll put in a few more wraps going forward a little bit just to secure it. Then I'll cut away the excess. Coming up to just behind the eye of the hook, I'll work backwards to cover up those butt ends 
and just make a nice tight tidy little head you don't want to put too many wraps on you want to put just enough to cover everything so look at the fly from both sides it's very easy to get caught into putting a whole bunch of wraps on the head and then having you know just a large monstrous head on this little fly five or six turn whip finish I can trim away the excess little head cement on both sides soak down in there and secure that and there is the lead wing coachman and a, uh, just a fun fly it's been around for a long long time it's a great wet fly to have I decided to tie this mostly because I had done the black turkey last week and this will comparing the two you can see the similarities and the differences between the two of them and who knows it could be that the black turkey was kind of an offshoot of the lead wing coachman but it's a fun fly to tie even funner to fish and I hope you enjoyed that that's the lead wing coachman Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, Remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.